the Chicago Convention, signed in 1944. What was the aim of the convention? It was arranged to replace bilateral agreements with multilateral agreements. These included the exchange of air traffic rights, the freedoms of the air. Also discussed were the control of airfares and freight tariffs. The last item on the agenda was the control of frequencies and capacity. Now we know what the purpose of the convention was, who turned up? Well, altogether 52 nations turned up to the meeting that lasted 37 days. However, this did not include Russia or Axis powers. The four main nations that did turn up were the United States of America, United Kingdom, Canada and Australia along with New Zealand. So what did USA, United Kingdom, Canada and Australia with New Zealand bring to the table? To start with, the Americans wanted complete market access without any restrictions. United Kingdom wanted tight regulations with independent international governing body. Canada wanted a multilateral regulatory body that only allowed limited competition. Australia and New Zealand wanted international ownership and management of all international air services. Obviously, not all 52 nations agreed with what was brought to the table. So, what was denied and accepted in principle? With all four major nations having showed their cards, who were the first to go? With Australia and New Zealand demanding international ownership and management of all international air services, this wasn't going to be very popular. With consumers in mind, Canada's option of a multilateral regulatory body only allowing limited competition wasn't widely accepted. With Canada and Australia with New Zealand out of the picture, it was now down to the USA with their complete market access without restrictions against the United Kingdom that wanted tight regulations with an independent international governing body. So whose idea was chosen between the USA and the United Kingdom? Well, obviously it had to be United Kingdom. What was the outcome of the Chicago Convention? Altogether, there were four principal agreements. The first principal agreement was the Interim Agreement on International Civil Aviation. The first agreement established the Provisional International Civil Aviation Organization, which was used until April 1947. The agreement allowed work to start before the convention had been ratified. The agreement came into force in June 1945 with a 21-member council and three committees, one for the air transport, another for air navigation, and the final for the International Convention on Civil Aviation. The second was the Convention on International Civil Aviation. This agreement established the International Civil Aviation Organization. The agreement ratified the convention in April 1947, which drew a close to the Provisional International Civil Aviation Organization. It produced 96 articles, including the privileges and restrictions of all contracting states, provide the implementation of international standards and recommended practices to regulate international air transport. The third was the International Air Services Transit Agreement. This agreement founded the first and second technical freedoms, with the first being the right to fly over a foreign country, and the second freedom the right to make a non-traffic stop, for example refuelling. This agreement was signed by all the delegated nations. And the fourth was the International Air Transport Agreement. The fourth agreement founded the third, fourth and fifth commercial freedoms, with the third being the right to set down traffic in a foreign country, the fourth is the right to pick up traffic from a foreign country, and the fifth is the right to pick up or set down traffic in a third country as a precursor to continuation of a third or fourth freedom flight. 
it was also signed by 19 delegate nations. To summarise, the convention was signed in 1944 with United Kingdom's option being preferred out of four and with four principal agreements, ICAO was formed. Hello and welcome to this first video in a series looking at aviation law. It will be primarily looking at topics required for the EASA PPL Air Law exam. However, we will take a deeper dive than necessary in many areas, such as looking at ICAO and EASA. In this video, we will begin by looking at a brief overview of the history of aviation law from the first powered flight in 1903 up until the founding of ICAO. We will then look at an overview of ICAO and what it does. The first powered flight took place on December the 17th, 1903, when Orville and Wilbur Wright took to the skies at Kitty Hawk in the United States. In the following years, aircraft were used to carry mail and other cargo. Just 10 years later, after the first flight in 1913, the first passenger carrying airline flights took place between St. Petersburg and Tampa in Florida. Aviation saw rapid development during the First World War, and by 1918, the countries involved in the war had produced more than 200,000 aircraft. Some of these aircraft were being operated internationally, carrying things like cargo and other military assets. There was growing international concern over air sovereignty, determining whether or not nations have sovereignty of the air over their territory. In an attempt to come to an international agreement on this matter, the Convention Relating to the Regulation of Aerial Navigation was arranged. This later became known as the Paris Convention of 1919. There were 26 nations that signed the treaty at the Paris Convention of 1919, including the British Empire, China, France, Japan and Italy. The outcome of the convention was that each nation has absolute sovereignty over the airspace overlying its territories and waters. This convention also saw the creation of the International Commission for Air Navigation. On the 7th of December 1944, the Convention on International Civil Aviation, which later became known as the Chicago Convention, was held with at least 52 nations being represented. This convention established the International Civil Aviation Organization as a specialised agency of the UN charged with coordinating and regulating international air travel. As of November 2017, 191 out of the 193 members of the UN are members of ICAO, with the exception being Dominica and Liechtenstein. It took three years for the first version of the Chicago Convention to come into force, and during this time the International Commission for Air Navigation, which we mentioned earlier, was disbanded. Revisions are periodically made and published to the Chicago Convention. The last revision was in 2006. ICAO publishes its information as a series of articles and annexes. Each article effectively lays out a rule that the body has created and it wants each of the member states to follow. There are 96 articles in total. Annexes contain standards and recommended practices. These are sometimes referred to as SARPs. There are currently 19 annexes. ICAO has an assembly which is comprised of all member states. The assembly meets at least every three years, though can be called at any time if necessary. An assembly session can only take place if at least 20% of the member states are present. The assembly has a number of roles, including electing states into the council, I'll cover the council in a moment, reviewing and taking action on the reports produced by the council, and approving amendments to the Chicago Convention. The Council is a body of ICAO that consists of 36 member states, which are elected by the Assembly. Each Council serves a three-year term. Representation considers states of chief importance in air transport, states that contribute the largest provision of facilities, and ensuring that all major geographic areas are covered. The Council produces annual reports which cover topics such as progress on strategic objectives, new and emerging activities and finances. It also produces the standard and recommended practices which are placed in annexes in the Chicago Convention. 
One interesting question regarding ICAO is what power it has if one of the member states is failing to comply with the Chicago Convention. As ICAO is an agency of the UN, rather than having direct enforcing power of the Convention, it instead has measures to pressure states into complying. ICAO can publish information from the results of audits it conducts. Additionally, it has the ability to suspend voting powers in the Assembly and Council. In summary, ICAO was formed from the Chicago Convention of 1944. It is an agency of the UN. Almost all of the members of the UN are also members of ICAO. ICAO articles define common rules that all member states must adhere to, and ICAO annexes define standards and recommended practices. We also had a look at the structure of ICAO, how it forms an assembly, and how this assembly forms a council. Please note that I have provided links in the description to a few sections of the ICAO website that cover the topics we have discussed. In the next few videos, we will begin looking at each of the ICAO articles and understanding how they affect aviation. If you have any questions or corrections on this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.